Hey everybody, this is day 24 of Commit. We're going to start with a little bit of movement to warm up before we settle into some deep stretches for the whole body. Please remember to like and subscribe and stick around to the end of the video where we break down pose from today's practice. Let's begin in a kneeling position with our toes curled under as we sit on our heels, stretching the arches of the feet and the toes. Keep your knees together and sit up tall, deep in your breath. Going into some neck stretches, let's draw half circles down from one shoulder to the other. To center, tilt your head to the right. Option to gently rest the hand on the head to deepen the stretch without putting any additional pressure down, just resting it here. Over to the left side. To center, lower to the tops of your feet, sitting back down on your heels. Hands on your knees, let's draw circles with our navel, finding some movement through the upper body. Moving in one direction for now. Other way. To center, let's roll the shoulders back. Next, placing your hands down ahead of you, fingers facing the body to stretch the wrists. Maybe even finding a little rock from side to side in this position. Coming up to kneeling, send your right leg out to the side in a gate pose. Big inhale and on an exhale, side bend to the right, right hand on leg, left arm reaches up and over.
Over to the left side now, right arm reaches up and over as we plant the left palm down. Gaze up, keeping the body open. Coming up to center, pull that right leg back in. Extend the left leg now for gate pose on the opposite side. Bending to the left, left hand on leg, right arm reaches up and over. Over to the right side, plant the right palm down, left arm reaches up and over. We keep the body open as we gaze up. As we come up, we're going to shift to a low side lunge at the left side of our mat, bending the left knee as we extend the right leg out long. Hands can stay down on the mat for support or Anjali Mudra, hands to heart. If you can, root through the right heel, turning the toes up. Rotate to the short edge of your mat in a low lunge, arms up. On an exhale, getting deeper into the hip stretch. Taking the hands down, send the hips back and forth between a low lunge and a half split a few times just to warm up the muscles here. On this next one, stretching back to a half split and hold. Keeping those front toes down on the mat, folding over that front leg as much as you can. Breathe into it. You can stay here, or if you're able to, you can lower your forearms down to the mat on either side of that front leg. Now using your hand to draw those front toes up and back. Good, coming forward, both hands to the inner edge of the front leg. Drop the front knee out to the side, turning onto the outer edge of the foot. Stay on your hands or lower to your forearms in a lizard pose. Still focusing on deep breaths as we try to relax into these stretches. Press up to your hands and bend that back leg, raising the foot up. If you're able to, reaching opposite hand back to grab the foot, twisting in towards our front leg, opening the chest and gazing up in the lizard twist. Release the back leg with control. Rotate to the long edge of your mat in low side lunge, and then switch over to the right side in Skandasana. Hands can stay down for support or Anjali Mudra, hands to heart. Try to root through the left heel as you turn the toes up. Rotate to the short edge of your mat in low lunge, arms up. Exhale, get deeper into those hips.
Hands down, shifting the hips back and forth between low lunge and a half split, warming up that front leg. On this next one, holding your half split, keeping the toes down on the mat as much as possible, we fold over that front leg. Staying here or reaching the forearms down to the mat on either side of that front leg. Next, grabbing hold of that foot and drawing those toes up and in to deepen the stretch. Coming forward to a lizard pose, both hands to the inside edge of that front leg. You can come down to your forearms as you drop the front knee out to the side, rotating onto the outer edge of the foot. Coming up to your hands, begin to bend that back knee, raising the foot up. If you're able to, we're twisting into that front leg and reaching back for the foot in our lizard twist. Release the back leg with control. Curl the toes under and make your way to a downward facing dog. We're staying in down dog for a few breaths. Draw the right knee forward to a pigeon pose. Take the time to lengthen through the back leg, making sure those toes are pointing straight back and not turning in. Square off the hips, get long through the body before folding forward. Curl the back toes under and press to downward facing dog. Deepen your breath. Let's go into pigeon on the left side now getting long through the body before folding over.
Curl the toes under and press back to down dog. Deepen your breath. Lower your knees to a tabletop position. Line yourself up and begin to move through cat-cow, flowing with your breath. If one of these poses feels better than the other, feel free to hold it for longer than just an inhale or an exhale, really listening to your body here. To a flat back, draw your knees forward and together as you send your feet out wide, wider than hip width apart. We're going into a hero pose. Sitting down between your feet, engage the core and get long through the spine, long through the neck, chest lifted. If this pose is not for you at the moment, feel free to sit in a kneeling position on your heels. Otherwise, in hero pose, we deepen our breath, hands in our lap or on our knees. Again, making sure that we're keeping those knees glued together. Tops of the feet are pressing down into the mat. Option to stay seated upright here in hero pose, or we can recline, coming down onto our forearms. Slowly, with control, make your way all the way down onto your back, hands holding onto your ankles or your feet. Remember, even when we're reclined, we're keeping our knees glued together. Deepen your breath. If you're reclined, prop yourself back up onto your forearms, making your way up as we all come forward through table and down onto our bellies. Connect your forearms down parallel to each other to a sphinx pose. As we lengthen through the upper body, long neck gazing forward, keep the legs engaged as we point the toes straight back, making sure they're not pointing in towards each other here. Option to press to cobra pose, deepening the stretch. Lower down, bending the knees and grabbing hold of the feet. Big inhale and on an exhale, we're lifting the chest and knees to bow pose. Don't forget to breathe while you're holding this position. Lower with control, pressing back to child's pose hips over heels, we get wide through the sit bones as we release tension in the lower back. Lifting the body and sitting back on our heels, let's come to kneeling. We're going to move through some camel poses. 
You have the option to curl the toes under, making the heels easier to reach, or you can stay down on the tops of the feet. Starting with a half camel pose, hands to our lower back. As we begin to bend back, reach the right hand for the right heel, left arm reaches up. Keep the front body open as we continue to squeeze the back body, pressing the hips forward, keeping them stacked above the knees. Return left, then right hand to your lower back, and straighten up. Over to the other side, left hand to left heel, right arm reaches straight up, press those hips forward. The goal being to keep them stacked above the knees. Gaze up. Right hand to lower back, left hand to lower back, return upright. To a full camel pose now. Begin to bend back, then carefully reach one hand back, then the other, grabbing onto your heels, pressing the hips forward, opening up through the front body, getting long, gaze is up, or you can allow the head to carefully drop back, gazing behind you. Raise your head and lower your hips down to your heels, still holding on to your feet. Fold over the legs, touching your forehead down to the mat ahead of you. Lift the hips, rolling onto the top of your head to a rabbit pose. Still holding on to the feet, get really, really wide through the shoulder blades here, feeling a stretch all along the upper back and through the neck, countering our camel pose. Releasing rabbit pose, make your way to a seated position. Take the soles of your feet together in a bound angle, engaging the outer edges of our thighs to draw the knees down towards the mat. Sitting up tall, you can nod the chin down slightly to get longer through the back of the neck here. If you want to deepen this stretch a little bit further, you can lean the body forward, keeping a flat back. Releasing bound ankle, draw your knees up together. Lean the body back and cross the right leg over left to a seated pigeon or figure four stretch. Use your hands behind you to press the body forward to deepen the stretch. Release, let's repeat that on the opposite side, left leg over right, pressing through the hands, leaning the body forward to deepen the stretch. and release. Lengthen out your legs together to a staff pose, toes pointing up. Inhale, arms up, get long through the back, folding forward from the hips, reaching for the ankles or the feet, bowing the head. Coming out of our forward fold, make your way down onto your back, legs extended. Draw the right knee into chest, then left hand guides it over to the left side in a reclined twist. Right arm is extended at shoulder level as we gaze over the right shoulder.
Take your time returning to your back. Extend the right leg, draw the left knee in, then right hand guides it over to the right side of the mat. Left arm extended at shoulder height, we gaze over the left shoulder. Take your time to untwist and then press yourself up to seated in an easy, comfortable position. Hands on your knees or folded in your lap. We sit up tall as we deepen our breath to finish up. Let's talk about hero pose. So hero pose is a really good stretch for the hips, the whole legs and the ankles. It helps to strengthen the arches of the feet. It helps to improve our posture. It's really good for the circulation in our legs and it helps with digestion. So it's actually a really nice position to hold in meditation following a meal. So to get into position in hero pose, we want to keep our knees together, but bring our feet wider than hip width apart so that we can sit down between them. So the goal is to bring the seat all the way down to the mat here while keeping our knees together. The tops of our feet are pressing down into the mat. We're lifting through the chest, shoulder blades are down and back, getting long through the neck. We want to ground through the tailbone here. Good. So the knees shouldn't be lifting off the mat either. They should be staying down and our hands can rest in our lap or we can extend the arms and hold on to the knees here. And this might even help us sit up a little bit taller if it's something that we prefer. So there's a nice internal rotation happening at the hips and some people are really comfortable in this position and some people aren't at all. So there are a few things that you can do to modify. The first one being if this is painful for you, Obviously, we don't want to do it. You can sit on your feet in a thunderbolt pose or curl the toes under, getting a stretch through the arches and the toes as well. And then just take this position anytime that hero is called for. Otherwise, you can sit on a block if you have a block. I like to sit on two blocks if I have to sit up a little bit higher than, than this width here. So if you're almost on the ground, you can sit on just the one block. But rather than turning this block up and sitting on this narrow edge, you can stack the two blocks together and we're going to bring those between the feet. Keeping the knees together once again and we sit. So this makes this position a lot more comfortable, especially for the knees. If you still find that you have a lot of pressure in the knees, you can take a small blanket or, or a rolled up towel. And you can play with different sizes of towels and blankets here, depending on how much cushion you need. And Annie, hi. And position the towel just behind the knees here to give you a little bit more support and relief from the knees as we sit down. So this makes this position a lot more comfortable. So again, we want to focus on sitting up tall, keeping the chest lifted down through the shoulder blades, gazing forward. From our hero pose unmodified, to go to a reclined hero, we still wanna keep those knees grounded and together. And what we're gonna do is carefully start to make our way back onto our elbows or our forearms. So once you're here, you might feel like you're tightening up quite a lot through the hips 
and through the legs here. And if your knees have to lift up and everything just kind of falls apart, maybe keep working towards it. But if you can get to this position comfortably enough, you can lower down slowly onto your back. Hi, sweetie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can lower down onto your back, and then from here, we would grab onto the ankles or the, or the, <laughs> or the feet. Thank you, Mimi. So you'll notice that there's a little bit of space underneath my lower back here. There are a few things that you can do if this is if it's not a back bend that you're comfortable with. So the first one being that rolled up towel, you can bring it to the arch of the back here. Sweetie, you're in my way. You can bring it to the arch of the back for support there. You gotta move so they can see. And then another thing you can do is position a cushion or a pillow beneath your shoulders and head here for some additional support or to make it a little bit more relaxing. And so you'll notice my knees are still together and they're still grounded down on the mat and that's really important. That's what we want. We still want to find length through the upper body and making sure that our ears are far away from our shoulders. Good. We can puff the chest out a little bit and gaze up as we slow down our breath. To release reclined hero, start to prop up onto the elbows, almost like coming out of a fish pose. We want to lift, prop, and then come all the way back up. Good. If hero pose is really uncomfortable for you, it could be because of a lack of consistency. Try to incorporate it into your practice a little bit more often, and you will start to see improvements there. Right.